Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're starting a series on refraction across boundaries. First we're going to talk about straight boundaries and then we'll talk about curved boundaries. But I looked in our repertoire and we didn't have very many videos on refraction so I wanted to spend a little bit more time and give you a little bit more detail of how to calculate the various situations. So what we have here is we have two materials. On the left side, we have an index of refraction N1. On the right side, index of refraction N2. On the left side, we have a point object right there. And we want to figure out where the image will appear and how far it will be from the boundary to the image. Now here we see that N2 is greater than N1. And in this particular case, let N1 equals 1, which means N1 must be air. And N2 equals 1.5, so that's probably something like glass. Now what you can see here is that the observer tends to be on the other side of the boundary from where the object is. So that's typical, and so that's the way it's drawn here. We'll show you another example in the next video where we have things turned around a little bit. Now we know that the equation for flat surfaces, because that means that the curvature, radius of curvature is infinite, so on the right side of the equation we end up with a zero, on the left side of the equation we end up with n1 divided by s, s being the distance from the boundary to the object, and plus n2 divided by s prime, where s prime is the distance from the boundary to the image, and that has to equal zero. So we'll work that out in just a moment. But how do we draw the, the rays for that? Well, what we're going to do is draw a ray from the object to the boundary right here, but not parallel to the optical axis. We'll do it at an angle. So here we'll draw a first ray like this. And if we then draw an optical axis perpendicular to the surface like this, we can see then that this is the theta sub 1, the angle relative to the perpendicular to the surface. Since N2 is a larger index of refraction than N1, the ray will bend towards the normal, so it'll go like this, and then you can see that the angle theta 2 is smaller than the angle theta 1. Now, as the observer on the other side, you see this ray coming in from this direction, and you say, okay, I think this ray came from back here somewhere, so you project, and I need to make this a little bit longer, you project that ray backwards until you hit the optical axis in the middle where the object is at and you imagine that this is where the image will be. And since the image is on the same side as the object, this will be therefore a virtual image, not a real image, because the ray doesn't actually come from there or doesn't actually go to the image. The ray appears to be coming from this position. It's not actually coming from the position, so therefore that becomes a virtual image to the observer. Now, that would mean that we probably have a negative s prime distance, s prime, which is this distance right here from the boundary to the image, and we expect that to be a negative because we have a virtual image. Now let's try that and see if that's indeed the case. So using this equation, we can see that n1, which is 1 over s, well, we need a distance for s. Let's make s 20 centimeters just to have a value for that. So if s is 20 centimeters, we get 1 over 20, plus n2, which is, uh, let's see here, uh, 1.5 divided by s prime, which is equal to 0. So now let's move this over to the other side. We have 1 over 20 is equal to minus 1.5 over s prime. So move that over here. We have s prime is equal to minus 1.5 times 20 divided by 1, and therefore you can see that s prime is equal to minus 30 centimeters. The minus does indeed indicate that it's on the same side as the object, therefore it's virtual. 30 centimeters means that it's further back from the boundary, and that again is in line with what we were expecting. So there's a simple example of how to deal with refraction at a flat surface or a flat boundary. And that's how it's done.